Hi guys, Miss Venable here bringing you a video tutorial on how to complete your ionic bonding report sheet. So you've been assigned four ions, two of them are cations, and those you are going to write in blue, and two of them are anions, and those you are going to write in the pink boxes. So I've assigned myself uh, four ions. Let's start with the cations in blue here. So the first one I assigned myself was lead Roman numeral four. And so that, that Roman numeral four tells me the charge that the ion's gonna form because it has four valence electrons. So it's gonna give them away. So I'm gonna write the formula for that PB because that's lead. And then uh, four plus or positive four. It's actually usually gonna be um, uh, four plus is usually the way we write it. So anytime you're given a transition metal or a poor metal, they're gonna have to tell you the Roman numeral so you know what to put as the charge. Um, okay, my second cation is not a monatomic ion. This is not an ion that's on the periodic table. This is ammonium. And ammonium is uh, listed on page seven of your periodic table. Okay, there's a chart there on page seven of all of the polyatomic ions. And so when I don't have just a regular um, ion, right, there it is. I need to look through that list and um, find which polyatomic ion it is. So you'll read through this list. And ammonium is actually the very first one. And so it tells me that the ammonium is nitrogen and four hydrogens. NH4 is the chemical formula. And the charge is a plus, which just means positive one. So I'm just going to copy the name of my assigned ion and I'm going to copy down that formula exactly as it's written on that list of polyatomic ions. Okay, let's look at our anions. So for my anions here in pink, I was assigned sulfur or maybe it would be called sulfide. You might you might be assigned the ion sulfide. And that just tell when I see ide for a, for an anion, I know that it's just sulfur. So ide is kind of our hint that it's a monatomic ion on the periodic table. And so I'm going to go over here to my periodic table and I'm going to find sulfur right here. So once you find the sulfur, um, I'm going backwards there, you're going to look up to the top and you're going to see what that charge is. Okay, and if you, if you guys look, um, I don't have it written on this, but the Roman numeral is 6, which means the charge is going to be a 2 minus. So when I write that ion, I just write S2 minus. Okay, my next anion is carbonate. Okay, that doesn't end in ide, so it's not on the periodic table. Instead, it's a polyatomic ion on page 7. So you're going to look through that list okay, right here, of polyatomic ions and find carbonate. And you're going to look at that chemical formula. And I see here that carbonate is a carbon, three oxygens, and it has a two minus charge. So the formula is CO3 with the two minus subscript, superscript. So I've written that here, CO3 with a two minus subscript excuse me, two minus superscript. So that means that that carbonate is going to act like, it's a carbon and three oxygens in the ion, but it acts like one thing. And it's actually going to take in two extra valence electrons. Okay, so that's it for the pink boxes and the blue boxes. Let's get into the gray boxes. So in the gray boxes is where you're going to chemically bond your ions, and you're going to write the chemical formulas and name them. Okay, so to write the chemical formulas, you're going to use the crisscross method. And I'm going to demonstrate how to do this first gray box. Okay, this first gray box here, you always write the cation first. So PB is going to come first. Okay, and on my handy dandy scratch paper here, I'm going to first write the cation. Okay, so that's the PB, 4 plus. And right next to it, I'm going to write the anion that it's going to bond with. So we're just going to intersect the boxes, right? I'm bonding PB and S, the PB column and the S row. So I just write down what those ions are. Okay, that is step one always. 
Step two is cancel the positive and the negative because we're going to make a salt. Ionic compounds are salts, okay, and they're always neutral, so you don't need any positives and negatives. Step three is crisscross the charges so that they become the subscript for the other ion, and that tells you how many ions you're going to need in order to satisfy the octet for the other one. So I'm going to take this two next to the sulfur and I'm going to move it so that it's a subscript for the lead. Okay, so it just moves right on down there. Now, instead of it meaning number of electrons, that's telling me how many lead ions. So I need two lead ions. And then I do the same thing with the four. Okay, the four moves down and it tells me how many sulfur ions. So right now, I'm not done yet, but right now what I have is PB2S4. That's a two to four ratio. And we're making a salt. They exist in big crystalline structures. And what we want to write is the smallest little unit or ratio of the ions that form that salt. And that's called a formula unit. So you want to write the lowest ratio. So you're going to reduce two and four. Um, 2 and 4 reduces to 1 and 2. So if I divide 2 by 2, I get 1. If I divide 4 by 2, I get 2. So that's going to reduce to a 1 to 2 ratio. And that's what I'm going to use as my subscripts. Now, you don't have to write the 1. It's understood, so we never write it. So my final answer is PBS2. Okay, and you need to write this 2 as a subscript. And the way you do that, on your there's a shortcut on your keyboard if you'll hold down your control button and your comma button, it'll toggle your cursor to go lower, and then you can write your sub, um, subscripts, and then you have to hit control and comma again, and you'll toggle your cursor back up to be normal size. Okay, if you have any questions about that, again, please message me. Okay, let's talk about the name. When you name this, you have to just name the ions. And if your, um, if your cation is a transition metal and it's had a Roman numeral, you have to include that Roman numeral. So PB is lead and it is a transition metal. And I, did, I was given a Roman numeral. Okay, so there's my cation, lead 4. And then you name the anion, which was made of sulfur. Now, if it's a monatomic anion, if it's just straight off the periodic table, sulfur, and it's not one of those polyatomics, it has to end in ide. Okay, so the name of that would be sulfide. That I hint is kind of a hint. It tells us that it's from the periodic table. Okay, so we're just naming ions, and if your anion is monatomic, change it to I. Let's do one that needs parentheses. So let's try this one down here um, with the PB and the CO3. Let's do this one. So my cation is the PB4+. Plus. And my anion is the CO3 2 minus. So I'm just going to write those ions. And you always want to write the cation first. The positive charge comes first. So again, PB4 plus is my cation, but this time my anion is CO3 2 minus. Okay, so I just literally wrote the ions. Follow the same process. Cancel the positive, cancel the negative, because we're making a salt and they're always neutral. And then crisscross the four and the two. So the two goes down and becomes the subscript for lead. And the four goes down and tells me that I need four ions of the carbonate. And again, you need to reduce two and four. So it should be a one and a two. So that becomes a one and that becomes a two. Okay, and then let's simplify and see what we got because we're not quite done. We don't need to write the one that's understood. But I need to talk about this three and this two. Okay, what do these things mean? So carbonate is a carbon and th with three oxygens. You can never, ever change what's inside of the ion. They're so tightly bonded together, they're acting like one thing. So it's got a carbon and three oxygens. You can't change that three. What you're trying to say here is that you have two of those ions. And two of those ions are bonded with one lead. So the way to show that when you have more than one polyatomic ion, because I've got two carbonates here, is to use parentheses. 
So I'm going to put the carbonate on the inside of the parentheses. And to say that I have two of them, I'm going to have a two on the outside of the parentheses. So let me add my parentheses here so you guys can see how that works. Okay. If you only had one carbonate, you wouldn't put any parentheses and you wouldn't put a one because it's understood. You would just write the CO3. But if you have more than one ion bonding and it's polyatomic ion, you, you have to move the, uh, when you crisscross, you have to move that number to the outside. Alrighty, let's go back up here and look at the ammonium and the sulfide, sulfur. So, um, the ammonium is NH4 with a one plus charge, I see here. One, NH4 with a one plus charge. And my sulfide or sulfur ion is S with a two minus charge. So I'm just gonna write those down exactly as I wrote the ions. The NH4 ammonium ion was on my list of polyatomics. And the sulfide is just regular sulfur. That's called a monatomic ion. So those are my ions. Follow the same steps to do your crisscross. Cancel the positive, cancel the negative. The two goes down to be the subscript for the ammonium and the understood one goes down to be the subscript for the sulfur. So I crisscrossed the superscripts to become the subscript for the other ion. And what this says, is that I have two ammonium ions and one sulfur ion, and I can't reduce that. So I am gonna have to put my ammonium in parentheses because that's a polyatomic ion and I have two of them bonding with the sulfur. So NH4 goes inside of the parentheses, the two goes right outside of the parentheses, okay? So ammonium contains a nitrogen and four hydrogens, but the two means I have two of them. And then that's bonded those two ammonium ions are bonded to one sulfur and the one is understood. I didn't, I didn't need to write the one. All right. Last one is ammonium and carbonate. This time we have two polyatomic ions. So again, I'm going to write the chemical formulas for the ammonium and the carbonate. So the ammonium is up here at the top. It's NH4 with the one plus charge and the carbonate is CO3 with a two minus charge. So I wrote those on my paper. Step two is always to cancel the positive and the negative because we're making a salt, salts are always neutral. So I canceled them. And then you do the crisscross of the charges. Ammonium has an understood one charge here. So that's gonna cross down to the carbonate and I don't need to write it, it's understood. And the two for the carbonate is going to cross over to the ammonium. And I need to put my ammonium in parentheses and put that two on the outside because I want to say that I have two ions of ammonium. Okay, so that's my final answer. Two ions of ammonium, one ion of carbonate. And that's how we complete the, they, they complete the octets for each other. So remember the goal of these ions bonding is to transfer valence electrons in order to complete the octet for whatever they're bonding with. So the, um, the number of electrons always has to work out to complete the octets for both of them. All right, this has been a tutorial. Thanks so much for joining me.